Welcome to Mindful Monday, brought to you by Stockton Unified School District Mental Health and Behavior Support Services. This month, our topic is on self-compassion. Ask yourself the following questions. Do you find that you are overly critical of yourself? Do you accept your imperfections and mistakes, or do they weigh you down and hold you back? Are you able to be present in the moment, or do you find yourself worried about the past or the future rather than being focused on the now? Think about your responses as we move through the video. Having self-compassion is critical to our overall well-being. Being mindful and accepting our strengths and weaknesses and allowing for growth is the key to self-compassion. Let's look deeper into what self-compassion is, why it's beneficial, and ways in which we can practice self-compassion on a regular basis. Self-compassion encompasses the following three areas. Self-kindness, or having the ability to refrain from harsh criticism. Be kind to yourself rather than evaluating yourself. The ability to recognize your own humanity or the fact that each of us is imperfect and each of us experiences pain. Recognize that you're not alone in your struggles. The ability to maintain a sense of mindfulness or non-biased awareness of experiences, even if they are painful. Take a balanced approach to negative emotions. Why is self-compassion important in our lives? Self-compassion leads to increased productivity. Self-compassion is likely to improve one's performance after failure. Self-compassion will maintain peace of mind when you remain calm in the face of failure, rejection, and criticism. You experience higher well-being and are more productive and successful. Self-compassion leads to decreased stress. Harsh self-criticism activates our sympathetic nervous system and elevates stress hormones. The sting of self-criticism can be so intense that it stops us from learning and being resilient in the face of failure. Self-compassion, on the other hand, may activate our biological nurturance and soothing systems, which leads to greater feelings of well-being. Here are some more benefits of self-compassion. Increased motivation, less fear of failure, taking responsibility for mistakes, more resilience in coping with life stressors, less depression, anxiety, stress, and avoidance, healthier relationships, increased social connectedness, life satisfaction, and happiness. Ways to practice self-compassion. Here's a few of my favorite. Stand up for what you believe, even if it's unpopular. Surround yourself with people who want you to succeed. In a study of counseling psychology graduate students, it was revealed that practicing mindfulness results in a significant improvement in self-compassion. Practice positive affirmations. Self-forgiveness. I am human. I acted in the best way I was capable of in that moment. I have grown as a person. I am grateful for increased insight and opportunity to make a better choice from now on. I accept this about myself. I allow myself to be at peace with this. I forgive myself. Practicing mindfulness with children has shown an increase in self-compassion. Here we have two examples. This can be used for yourself, your children, or in the classroom. They are go on a safari and tense and release. Here's a short video on how mindfulness can increase self-compassion. Imagine you're walking down a street. It's a street you know well, maybe one you walk down every single day. But you're so caught up in your own thinking, wondering what you're gonna have for lunch, thinking back to a conversation you had earlier, that you end up falling down a hole. Now at the bottom of this hole, 
you find yourself thinking, how did I end up here? Worse yet, the next day, you do the exact same thing. And then again, the next day. May not sound like an especially cheerful idea, but as an analogy for the mind, it's really helpful. Because so often, we follow the same habits of mind over and over again. And so we find ourselves in an emotional hole. Maybe even a place that's really painful. But imagine if you started just noticing, being more aware of your surroundings. Sure, maybe next time you'd realize a little too late and you'd still end up in the hole again. But maybe the time after that, you'd notice the hole and choose to walk around it instead. This is what it means to train the mind. This is what it means to have headspace. If you'd like more information, please visit the following websites. Self-compassion may not always be easy, but remember to make it a daily priority. By practicing self-kindness, common humanity, and mindfulness, remember to love yourself because you matter. Thank you for watching this month's video. We look forward to seeing you next month. For more information, visit www. StocktonUSD.net forward slash MHBSS.